Hello fellow world travelers, this is Chris Ward coming to you from the top of Aronachala, a mountain uh, that overlooks the hustle and bustle of the city of Tiruvannamalai in the state of Tamil Nadu. I love Tamil Nadu because it's cited as the origin of uh, Sanskrit, one of the earliest known forms of uh, the written language. So uh, there's an interesting story behind Arunachala. In the beginning of the 20th century, Ramana Magarishi uh, was a yogi who at the age of 14 ran away from home after hearing the word Arunachala to visit this mountaintop and penniless, ended up on the street, was starving, uh, dying when he was visited by his god Shiva who uh, asked him to go into the mountain. He said, I'll take care of you going to the mountain and meditate. And which he did and uh, I've heard everything from 15 to 30 years. Of course there is actually the, his account of the story uh, which uh, lends more to about 30 years uh, when after such time of meditating by himself inside the mountain he was revisited by God in which he explained came down as a pillar of light and said take the lessons that I have taught you and go back to the people. And as a matter of fact, Tiruvannamalai is home to the famous Ramana uh, Ashram. So you can go and learn about his teachings. And it's not, I've read his uh, book, it's not unlike a lot of our Buddhist teachings. He talks about separating yourself from your identity, that your identity is a, essentially false. It's something that uh, was given to you either at birth, you didn't choose your parents, you didn't choose your religion, you didn't choose where you were born. You've created your identity and you've spent your entire life trying to defend that identity. So he says that in order to find peace, you must separate yourself from this false identity that you've created. So really interesting lesson from him. One thing, this is my third trip and it's kind of funny how the very first trip, there's kind of a, there's a lesson in personal development here is because the very first time I came to Adonachala, I'd never been up the mountain before and so I didn't know where I was going and me and my friend Hemad Bai just trekked up the mountain and it was painful. We, we didn't even, we, we, we walked off the trail almost immediately. Halfway up the trail it was all just rocks. There was no actual footpath. Sadly I was unable to complete my video from the uh, top of Adonachala so but I want to make sure I told the story. It was, um, I left off, I, I was climbing through the weeds, him and by an eye, and uh, not a safe thing to do in a country that's notorious for king cobras and other snakes. So we made it to the top, and amazingly I found out that I was not the first person to ever crest that hilltop. Uh, when I looked to the other side, there was actually a footpath that led down the opposite side of the hill. So that was discouraging. It took me five hours to get up there. So the second time I went, there was a new set of challenges in which there is no tree coverage. So you're walking up, it's a complete incline. So this is not for an, you know, someone who's not in some form of shape. There was absolutely no tree cover, which meant that I was exposed to the sun the entire time. By the time I reached the top, now I did the one thing that you're not supposed to do. I also went on this hike by myself. So I reached the hilltop. As I came back down, I was out of water, uh, became dehydrated, started suffering from heat exhaustion. And when I reached the bottom of the hill, I was struggling step by step, uh, resting as much as I could, but I had to get off the mountain. And a young man dis discovered me, took me over to a well and I showered there, it was absolute lifesaver. And then he gave me a large bottle of water from the well and he said, absolutely, it'll cleanse anything that's bad in you. Bad idea. I mean, he was a lifesaver, but I got a parasite out of it and nearly died from that a month later. So he walked me off the mountain, he helped me out at that point. Uh, but it took me two and a half hours to crest the hill. This time today, even with taking breaks and visiting all three caves, it only took me two hours to get to the top of the hill. So what I'm encouraging everybody that whatever your obstacle is in life, I, I saw a billboard in Denver, Colorado that said, whatever your mountain, climb on. And I recognize that is, is that every time we face any obstacle, it's good is, is to overcome that obstacle. You don't wanna just stop and then retreat. 
when I was in the military, my MOS, my specialty was cavalry scout. And so my job was to actually, uh, me and my team, would, our platoon would go out and uh, we did area and zone reconnaissance and route reconnaissance. So we would go out and find, the, determine the trafficability of a route if we saw an obstacle, we had to classify the obstacle, rate its, uh, we had to make a decision. Either we remove the obstacle, either if it was something that we could do, we would do it ourselves, or if we had to call in the engineers to remove an obstacle, we would do that as well. Then we would let the unit, the full body behind us, know that there was an obstacle in the way, and then that we would either create a bypass for that obstacle, build a bridge to get over it, or so on and so forth. But that way we made it easier for the unit, the people coming in behind us to be able to overcome that obstacle. And so we do that in life. It's good that if we face an obstacle to overcome it, that way that obstacle is gonna present itself again in life, regardless of what that obstacle may be. It's gonna come back around, whether that is going flat broke, whether that's uh, perhaps an illness, you know, cancer, so on and so forth. Whatever your obstacle becomes, it may present itself again. But the second time you reach that obstacle, you're going to know how to overcome it. And the best part is, is that the people behind you, the people that come up and they confront that obstacle for the first time, you can say, listen, I already know how to bypass this. I already know how to get around it, right? I already know how to remove the obstacle. So it's very important for all of us, whatever your mountain, climb on. That's the lesson that I got from Arunachala. You know, the, the same, the funny thing is that same kid that found me, that led me to the water, when I was arrived at Arunachala today, when, as soon as I reached the path, the, as soon as I got off the, the motorcycle, that same kid just happened to be walking down the path and he walked me all the way up to the top of Arunachala, barefoot. He never ran out of breath. He never broke a sweat. Walking barefoot. He has walked that mountain so many times throughout his entire life that is absolutely not an obstacle for him. He loves being up there. Not only is it incredible exercise, it's also part of a spiritual journey. The Hindu belief is, is that not that God is, that that's like a church. They believe that God is in the mountain, that it is God himself. So from Arunachala, now in Tiruvannamalai, I want to say, you know, bless you. Find it, whatever your obstacle is. I hope that you overcome it. And this is Chris Ward signing off.